Hi folks, Skip Sims, Nashville, Tennessee. Today, we're gonna do a little do-it-yourself speaker replacement on a 68 Marshall basket weave. We've got a quad set of Selection 412 Greenbacks, 25 watt, 16 ohm, and today we're gonna show you how to do it right with the right tools, very simple, uh, very helpful information that you can do on the road and do in your shop as we're doing here. So uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun, so roll your sleeves up, plug your soldering iron in, and let's have some fun. Now before we get started with this project, you're going to need a tool rundown. Get your soldering iron, 60-40 solder, preferably leaded. I know lead frees out there, everybody's get 60-40 with lead. Better connection, better connectivity. Um, going to need a voltmeter, we're going to be reading impedances on your speakers, make sure you've got proper impedances when you get your speakers. And then you're going to need a 9 volt battery and uh, battery lead as well. Wire strippers, 22 AWG wire. That's what comes standard in a Marshall cabinet. And if um, you don't want to use that wire, replace it with new stuff, save the vintage stuff for another day. But you'd be best off using new wire. And you're gonna need a screw gun. Phillips head to take the backing, uh, the back off and the Phillips head screws. And this particular model, Marshall, has the old cheese head aircraft flathead screwdriver. So you need a flathead screwdriver if you have a vintage cabinet. Later years, Marshall had Phillips screws, but uh, this one has the old cheese head. So this one's vintage. So we're going to do it vintage style. So that's what you'll need. Next step, we're going to be checking the impedances on our speakers. Now before we actually install the speakers in the cabinet, it's a good idea to go ahead and unbox all the speakers, get them laid out on the bench flat, cone down, have the tabs facing you so we can check for the impedance. We want to make sure we have a nice matching quad before we install them in the cabinet. What I like to do is use a nice sharp knife. You don't have to use very much bigger. Cut the tape. over. And right along where the seam is where they have the folder, just cut your plastic there. And this is how a greenback is born. Very nice. And we're just getting into the last speaker here. You know, I always get accused of just being a little too picky and too meticulous about how I approach a job, but to me it's just always paid off to be professional, be precise, because you got a lot of money invested in a quad of selections. I think these things retail for about $125 a piece. So you got quite an investment here, so you may as well protect it so you can have sound for years. Let's get started. Right now that we have all of our speakers on the bench, cone down, we have all the tabs facing us. Two steps I like to take to make sure that I have matching quad here with impedance, and then we're gonna check for phasing, okay? Just something I like to do before I install in the cabinet. Once I have everything screwed in in place and soldered and then have a check on my quad, and find out later I have a speaker that I've installed that I probably could have caught um, on the bench to, to replace the speaker if I need be, if uh, any kind of mount, manufacturer uh, default or whatever. But this is a good tech tip to do. Saves you a lot of work. You don't have to do the job twice. So set your voltmeter in the ohms position. And you take your positive and your negative lead and put it on the tabs, the corresponding tabs, positive and negative. And this particular speaker reads 13 and a half ohms. And this one reads 
5 ohms. 13.5 ohms. And 13.5 ohms. So we have a matching quad of greenbacks. Now I'll take a 9 volt battery with the leads. Same thing. Red lead to positive, black to ground. You're going to hear a, a little popping noise and what you're looking for and you're looking for the cone response to go out of the basket and not recoil. So if it pulls in, that means that it's out of phase. And you can test that either way. Positive on red, negative with black. And there we have the cone. And you get that cone, you see how that cone is recoiling out. Very good test. This is what it'll look like when a speaker is out of phase. See the cone, how it pulls in? That's out of phase. A lot of repairs I have on my bench. Guys come in with amps where the wires have been pulled off their speakers in the amp. The wires have been turned around. They have a, a screwed up transformer. Uh, they have complaints about their rig not sounding correct. It's because they're out of phase with their band members. So it, it's, a, it's a great tip. Nine volt battery in these leads. It'll, it'll, it'll solve a lot of problems. That one's perfect. This one as well. And speaker number four. So we have a perfectly matched 25 watt set of greenbacks here ready for installation. Now we're ready to open up the back of the cabinet and install the speakers. Got this down to the last screw. And we have a nice birch plyback 68 cabinet. Got my original wiring harness here that, as I said, I've had many quads in this cabinet over the years, so all we're going to use out of this is the original jack. We'll desolder these wires and use the new wire with our new selections. This is a good time to point out why we like to break in our speakers um, before we actually take them to a gig or a recording session. Um, very nice job uh, surround doping. And um, with this speaker being brand new, this, this surround is going to be very tight. So the speaker is, is, is it's brand new. It's, so what we want to do is we want to break the speakers in once they're installed. And, um, and, I, and I'll, I'll elaborate more on that at that point uh, when we get them installed. But for now, I just wanted to uh, demonstrate the suspension in a speaker. You can see and feel that there's, there's quite a bit of resistance here. And where the real warmth in the wood comes from um, uh, in a speaker is, is having a well-worn surround. So once we get these installed, I'll talk more about how to break these in. Now, vintage spec insulation um, for this particular model, Marshall cabinet. Speaker tabs were pointing inside and that's what we're um, going to be replacing this back with. So um, speaker tabs inside. Catch one of the upper right or left hand corner holes so you can get a speaker hanging so you don't have to sit here and hold it. I like to hold my speakers up. I don't like to work on a cabinet with the cabinet face laying down. I just have never done it that way. Um, I have better control with my tools, my screwdriver. Um, also too, um, I've seen people drop things out of their pocket, uh, drop their screwdrivers and right through a brand new cone on a speaker. Very, very sad day that day. You've got too much money invested in that. So, you know, I'm just trying to give you some good hints to make sure that you do the job properly. Once we get these set in here, get those where they'll hang, I'll get the bottom two in, and then we'll center the speaker on the baffle opening. 
All right, now, once you have all four screws in, you can lift up on the basket and fill the speaker baffle, find the center on the baffle. And at that point, that's where you're going to make the permanent fixture. You'll feel that screw start to bite, go to the opposite side, run that one down until you feel it bite. She's in place. Now take the other two, bring the same amount of pressure on those screw heads, just snug. They don't have to be so tight that you're distorting the frames of the speaker basket. That's not what we want. If you think about it, if you're going to distort the frame, what's that going to do to the surround and how this speaker is going to respond to the signal? It's not going to be proper if the basket is distorted. So that's how to ensure proper sound out of your speakers. And now once you have all four of them somewhat snug, just go around and give it just an extra twist so you feel about the same amount of torque on every screw without denting in the surround. Now, how many butterfingers do we have out there, including myself? Well, I'll tell you what I'm talking about. I like to get the top two speakers in first because if you have a bottom speaker installed and you're trying to install a top one and you drop a screwdriver, you risk tearing a cone. So just a little hint, if you're installing speakers with an upright, put the top two in first and that way you will decrease the risk of tearing up a cone. Okay, we're on the last speaker now and again, I just want to emphasize how important it is to keep proper torque on your mounting screws. Remember, these are, these are fine threaded screws. These are aircraft screws and they're meant to stay fastened under high vibration. So you'll feel, you'll feel the speaker gasket when it is nice and flush against the speaker baffle and once it's flush, you'll feel the screw grab and just not even a half a turn, I'd say. Uh, if you can get them all at that torque, um, you'll be sure not to distort your speaker basket and therefore your speaker cone will stay in perfect diameter. All right, now that we have all of our speakers installed properly, it's time to wire them up. So go ahead and plug in your starting iron, let it start warming up, and let's take a look at our wiring diagram. Being that this is a 68 basket weave, I'd have a tendency to want to stick to old school wiring. Uh, we're going to do series parallel 16 ohm and this is the old wiring harness I had with several different wiring configurations I've had over the years of owning this cabinet. But um, we're going to do away with that one and I'm going to be using new 22 AWG wire uh, available at any one of your electronic stores around. Um, black and red, Marshall. So anyhow, uh, we're going to wire up the left side, then we're going to wire up the right side. We're going to pull it together. Uh, we'll start it on the output jack and we'll explain exactly which tabs go where and how to test it along the way. Download the wiring diagram at premierguitar.com slash 412 hyphen wiring. We've also embedded the wiring diagram in this video and it will appear in a moment. And what I like to do, I look at my backboard and I see that my input jack is at the bottom. So we're going to wire this classic version style. We're going to start with the wiring with the top wire to the bottom speaker and then give a long enough lead to reach our backboard so that we can open the backboard and inspect now and then, tighten screws and still have enough room to remove your backboard, possibly lay it down on the floor without having to disconnect the jack. So I'm going to get some of these wires skint back, tin the leads up and get some solder on these solder tabs and get the famous twist going on.
If you plan to wire your speakers right now, hit pause when the diagram appears on the screen. Wire up the two tabs on each speaker as shown in the schematic. Just solder the wires to the speaker tabs. We'll cover soldering the speaker jack in a later step. After you've wired up the four speakers, resume video playback. Skip will then review his completed wiring and you can compare your work to his. Okay, now that we have everything wired, I'm just gonna give you a recap on um, you know, which wires go where to be successful at getting this wired series parallel. Um, just be sure to stick to your diagram. If you listen and look at the diagrams at the same time, you'll, you'll see how to wire this properly. Um, I just pick the left side to use as my positive red lead and I start at the upper left hand speaker and start with the positive lead on the positive speaker tab on the left side and if you follow that red wire all the way down it goes to the speaker jack. Then I take the negative lead wire and go to the negative speaker tab on the left side and it goes to the positive tab on the on the lower bottom, on the lower left speaker, and then also too it picks up and comes off the negative tab. You can see the break right there, and then it goes to the negative connection for the um, output speaker jack. That's the left side. The right side is just opposite of that. I start with the negative lead on the top, and that negative lead goes all the way to the speaker jack. Black red on the positive tab on the upper right hand speaker and it's wired down to the negative speaker tab on the lower right hand speaker and then also too red is soldered to the positive tab on the, on the lower right hand speaker and goes out to the positive side of the output jack.